special relationships that you've given us. I pray that love will flow in this church. And I ask this all in Jesus Christ's precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. I first of all want to tell you that I am not going to try and uh, abandon you next week, but I am going on vacation. So if I don't answer your phone call from Wednesday to Wednesday, I'm on vacation. So just want to let you know that so that if you try and call, I will be away. And taking my uh, sweetheart out to California, and uh, so uh, we're going to be spending some time together. I might even get to Disneyland, who knows? We'll see. Um, this morning, one of, um, one of the church members said that I was a little confused with your title. I thought you were going to go one direction and you went another direction. Sometimes uh, the titles and the scriptures and everything go into the church office a good uh, three or four weeks before I leave. Uh, on Wednesday, I will make sure that everything for the month of March is into the office. So, if the title doesn't fit, it may be that the Lord has changed a few things around. Don't be surprised. All right, let's turn this on. I believe that one of the greatest things that we need in life is focus. Um, I know that in this day and age, when I talk about cameras, most of you know cameras with what? I know it's back here someplace. You know the camera by what you got in here, right? You push some buttons and you point it at whoever you want to take pictures of. You push another button on the screen that takes a picture. I'm afraid I didn't learn how to take pictures that way originally. I have an old uh, Canon AE-1. And most of you won't even know what that is uh, at home. I, I learned how to take pictures by by learning the different speeds on the film and apertures and how to, uh, I, I knew how to take up close up, up of photography, I knew how to, to do things with far away and all of this type of thing. You could do amazing things with lenses if you had enough money in order to buy all sorts of lenses for the camera to do whatever you wanted to do. I know. In this day and age, you stick up your phone, and as long as your phone is pointed at the right thing, it will focus on what it needs to focus on. Focus is an interesting thing. You can turn focus in such a way that you can capture sharply those things that are closest to you. And everything that is beyond that point is blurred. Or you can focus on that which is far away, and everything that's close to you. I think that sometimes in the church we have made our focus as the wrong type of thing. And we're trying to get pictures of things that we do not even realize are not best for us to focus on. And so I would like to set the focus back on some things so that we can understand what we need to look at. Take your Bibles. And I'd like you to turn to one of my favorite chapters, Romans, the eighth chapter. <laughs> Romans, the eighth chapter, and we're going to look at uh, we're going to look at the verse four. I'm going to actually back it up with just a little bit and pick up the last part of, of verse three. He can then sin in the flesh that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. One of the 
the problems that we have so many times is that our focus is in the wrong place. We, we must understand what the law is all about. The law it is not just all of those Ten Commands that are out there. Jesus took those Ten Commands and he combined them in such the way that what he did is he took those Ten Commandments and really boiled them down to what is love for God and love for man. The greatest problem that we have is in the sinful natures that we have, we cannot keep the law. The greatest thing that all of us want to have is we want to have love. Amen? All of us want to be loved. We want to have someone who cares for us, someone who will listen to us, someone who will respond to us, someone who will be a part of our lives. Amen? But what happens when, when we get out there and we try to do the things of love? You see, the problem is, is that our normal sinful natures get into the way. No matter what we do, the law begins to show where the cracks are and what the problem is with our sinful natures. Have you ever been frustrated with love? So, the, the, this is what the, what the commandments are all about. But have you been frustrated in love? You try and focus on all the things on how to do it right. And so what do they tell you this time of year? You need to go out and buy chocolates. Um, uh, let's see, sugar could be a problem. Chocolate is a problem. Okay, candy's out. Buy flowers. Uh, you know, the problem is flowers eventually will die. Get them a color. We're making Hallmark rich. We will do all of these things. We'll take our special loans. We'll take them out. Do all the right things. But have you ever noticed that you always hurt the one you love? Amen. You see, the problem is, is that in our sinful nature, we can't follow through with the basic Ten Commandments that are there, the commandments of love. Well, how do we look at commandments? We look at commandments either as uh, suggestions, or we like to look at them and we say, man, that's too confining. Have you ever thought about that with the law that it's confining? Well, we do not realize that the whole purpose of the commandments is that they reveal the very nature of God. And what is that nature? God is love. So in our sinful nature, we cannot do this. Now, in the verses ahead, it gives us the idea of how we can begin to take care of this problem. What we need to do is we need to accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We need to ask for forgiveness for our sins. But what begins to happen when we ask for forgiveness for our sins? You know, a sad thing happens. We can ask for forgiveness, and we say, oh, my slate is wiped clean. Now I can keep the Ten Commandments. Well, what nature do we use in order to keep the Ten Commandments? Guess what we go back with? The very sinful nature that helped us to break the commandments in the first place. And so, folks, it becomes a vicious cycle. As Paul put it, he says, the things that I want to do are the it gets very hard, doesn't it? Because the problem is we ask for forgiveness, but then we go out there and think that we can keep the law of God again in our sinful nature. And folks, we are caught in the problem of the old covenant. I want to remind you, can you obey the commandments with your old nature? Christ can forgive you, your sins will be forgiven. You see what our problem is? 
too many times we go back there and, and, and we try to do all the right things. But you know, folks, if we really don't know how to love, we can give all the flowers in the world, but if we don't really know how to love the person that we're with, there's got to be a change. A different focus that we have in our lives. Verses uh, uh, 9 to 10 of Romans 8, I, I've recorded out there the, what comes from the New International Version. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by what? The Spirit. Now, sometimes our sinful nature gets in there and we're, we follow after the wrong type of spirit. So I'm so grateful that Paul continues on and he says, if the spirit of God lives in you, the spirit of what? The spirit of God and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, see we're defining it now, it's not just the spirit, it's the spirit of God, it's the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. You see, what has to happen is we need to focus not on our way of trying to keep the Ten Commandments. We know what they are. Thou shalt do this, thou shalt do that, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not. You can fill in the blanks. You've all been taught the Ten Commandments. We've learned them along the way. We can repeat the Fourth Commandment by heart. Most of us here can say, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But folks, how many of us are trying to keep the commandment in our sinful nature? You see, the problem is, is that the focus should never be upon us and how we can keep God's commandment with our sinful nature. We need God's Spirit to help us. Yeah. Folks, I'm going to tell you my greatest struggle is allowing the Holy Spirit to work in my life. Any one of you struggle with that same struggle? You see, I keep wanting him to do it with my sinful nature and I keep ending up falling have on my face wondering why I'm in this trouble time after time again. I need to let go and focus on allowing the Holy Spirit to be in my heart to guide me and direct me in the way I should go. If I'm going to keep God's commandments, I cannot do it with my own. I'm just taking you through some of the principles of alcoholics anonymous. We can't change ourselves. We've got our own opinions. We've got our own things. We need to turn it over and allow the Holy Spirit to be working in our lives. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to love those who are with us, those who are around us, to ask him to work with us so that we can obey God's commandments of love, so that we can move forward in the direction that he wants us to go. See, again, what we often do is too much of the time we try to do it on our own. I'm going to tell you something on March the 7th, we've had a little change. And we've asked uh, Chaplain Torres to come in and spend a weekend talking about marriage. I believe that we have problems here because we haven't learned how to allow God's Holy Spirit to do the work in our hearts, to work, do the work in our minds, to do the he needs to come in there and the old man of sin must be put to death. 
know. Many people uh, say that it's wrong to uh, uh, to put dogs on chains for a long time. You know what I'm talking about? I, I've heard that late, uh, not too long ago in the municipality, they have put a law that you cannot chain up a dog any longer than four hours. But you need to chain up your sinful, major dog of sin onto the chain and leave him on the chain so that he can die there and allow the Holy Spirit to work. Romans chapter 8, verses 15 and 16. This is part of the reason why I love this. Oh, I should flip back to 7. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out. Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Do you know what the picture is of the word Abba? It's not just Father, it's Dad. I know some of you that may have had rotten human fathers that haven't shown you the right picture. I can't change that, but what I can tell you is this. When God's Holy Spirit works in you, you begin to see your Heavenly Father as God. Think back in your life. <coughs> Think of that one person that is so meaningful that you would love to go to them. I don't care whether it's a father or a mother or someone else along that way. But that person that you know that you could go to and always loved you with an enduring love. That person who could take you in and bring you and hold you. That's the relationship that Jesus wants to have with you. That's the relationship that the Holy Spirit wants to bring us to. That we come to the point where we become adopted into the family of God. You see, you not only get adopted and get a new daddy, you get adopted and you get more family. Here's the thing, if the family that you get adopted into is still holding on to the sinful nature, what will happen is there will be problems all the way around. But family members that are bringing God's Holy Spirit into their lives and are being changed, so the old nature of sin is dying out, and the new nature led and guided by the Holy Spirit comes in. You get adopted into a neat family. Did you know that when a natural born child is born into the world, they can be written out of the web. But an adopted child can never be adopted and be written out of the web. Did you know that? You cannot be written out of God's will for you. I think all of us have felt alone, felt like no one cares. You misunderstand. This is why you need the you need the Holy Spirit to be a part of your life. God never wants you to be left alone. 
He wants you to put aside that nature of sin. He wants you to accept His Holy Spirit into your life. He wants you to be changed. He wants you to become part of the family. What a wonderful thing that begins to happen. We can look forward to be loved. Not for who we are, but who lives in and through us. I know, I'm, I've got two brothers and a sister. There are some times, I don't know, have you ever not wanted to be around your siblings? <laughs> That's the problem with the old nature again. But I'm going to tell you something about my sister and my, my two brothers. No matter what happens, I love them with an enduring love and they are my, my sister. Amen. And when we get adopted into the family, we have brothers and sisters who in spite of the women sinful nature, the same problem of committing the same problem over and over and over again. You're going to find out that you're going to be budding against the law. You're going to be finding out that there's no hope. Folks, this is the time where our focus needs to be on God's and our heart. This is the time that we need to be asking that God's Spirit will move and work inside of us. This is the time that we need to look forward to this. We will come to the point when the Holy Spirit works in us that the outcome is love. By the way, I found the whole quote. I looked online. This is what I found on Facebook from, from thank you, by the way, on helping me find this. Dr. Henry Cloud said this, codependency is grace without truth. And how often we have worked on that and thinking that that is love when we end up into a sickness of codependency where we keep giving grace. Now the other hand, and sometimes we have, as Adventists are very good at this, judgment is truth without grace. And how often have we received that type of problem in the church? But I love what he says next. That's the why I found the full quote. I knew there was something more. True love is grace and truth together. Amen. Show up with both. Amen. I'm going to do the prayer again differently today. Rather than me just praying, I would like you to get in group of two or three. I would like you to first of all pray that the Lord will help you to kill your sinful nature. I'm going to ask you to then to ask the Holy Spirit to come into your lives. And then I'm going to ask that you will pray that an outcome of love will be in this church. Grace and truth together. Divide up in groups of two or three and, uh, and let's pray together.
But I pray now that your Holy Spirit will move within us so that we may live as you want us to live. Now, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit